Okay, so what's up there guys and welcome back to Dig It Detecting. Welcome also back to another very foggy morning at the old abandoned school site. Uh, we were here just yesterday shooting round seven uh, with young Dominic and uh, I'll tell you what, we had a bloody amazing day. It started out as a very foggy morning just like today and then turned into beautiful blue skies. We were running the Equinox 800 and opting for the big 15 inch coil and that is exactly what we're going to do again today. Some will have seen in my last video, uh, we finished off in line sort of with that cricket pitch and we gridded everything out uh, over towards the fence there so uh, running back and forth uh, this way this time uh, instead of going long ways like we always have we're going to go the other way now back and forth this way so yesterday we pretty much finished off as I said uh, pretty much at the end of that cricket pitch and we ran a line up to here so we're going to start right here and uh, run over the cricket pitch back and forth and try and finish off the rest of the oval today so it is uh, what 10 40 on the watch right now so 20 to 11 we uh, we've just started with the big 15 inch coil and we've got our first target so let me try and find him again there he is so still cherry picking this side out uh, as I said, for round uh, six and seven, uh, or so, sorry, seven and eight, uh, we're going to be using the big 15 inch coil. Uh, for round nine and 10, uh, we are going to opt for that little six inch coil, the little baby's hand, and really cover, uh, I'll just show you quickly, really cover these very trashy areas around the sports shed and uh, where, where we snagged that florin uh, in yesterday's video. That was just a ripper, wasn't it? We just walked straight over there. And... Uh, you know, look, it was untouched ground, a very, very trashy ground. However, the first signal we picked out happened to be a florin. Just amazing. So I'll tell you what, you sometimes get very, very lucky. And uh, I think I fluke myself sometimes, or, I, you know, I jinx myself. So have a listen to those kookaburras. One's up in that tree there. And one's over in the tree up there. I'll see if I can zoom in on him for you. There he is. He'll sing back in a minute, I reckon. I'm getting distracted, aren't I? <laughs> We've got a coin in the hole waiting for us. Let's go after him and uh, we'll leave the kookaburras alone. That sounds so cool though. Singing away in the tree. So there we have it. Our first coin, uh, straight off from the shed. I generally... I generally sort of walk, you know, set up at the shed there, this little sports shed, and walk off from there. So there is our first coin, a 1942, I think. Let's give him another rub, maybe three. Let's have a look. There we are, 1943. So nice way to start off the day. It was not a silver coin. However, another penny from this site. I wonder how many we're going to get today. Uh, and including that, uh, including with pennies, how many silver coins are we going to get today so we'll keep going that is our first target and what a ripper has said we're going to be running lines up and down and uh, we'll try and make it to the end by the end of the day so just taking a step back from that last target or the first target i should say the root penny right there uh, just walking back you know when i sort of uh, fill my hole in i always step back a meter and try and recover that ground and in doing so we found another target and not only that i swung over here Look at that, another one, they're everywhere. So let's go after this guy first. Surely one of them's gonna be a silver coin. Surely, don't call me Shirley, surely. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's have a look. I'm sure we can get a silver coin pretty quickly out of this site this morning, uh, considering how many were coming out yesterday. We got the shillings, we got the sixpence, uh, and then we snagged the florin, just phenomenal. So. Uh, we have done, what, 200 and, uh, I haven't counted round seven in just yet, uh, but from six rounds, we've done 288 coins out of this site, uh, some 40 odd coins uh, out of that 288 have been silver, not this guy though, there we go, a little one cent coin, I tell you what, uh, like I said yesterday, not many of these guys have come out, that's for certain. Uh, not many one and two cent coins at all. And we've had some great success uh, on the trash and the treasure. And uh, not to mention, as I said, the pennies and the silvers. They're just everywhere out here. And not many one cent coins. Really, really cool. Right, fill that guy in. 
a little bit of dirt left on the surface, that's okay. That'll disappear. As I said, this is, uh, for anybody that uh, has not tuned in, uh, for anybody that has been for the last six rounds, you'll, you'll well and truly know, but this is an abandoned school site. So, as long as we fill our holes in, it doesn't matter about that little bit of dirt on the surface, no one's going to see it. Apart from me, when I return again, we'll move that coil out of the way, I can spot him, I've got my eye on him, and know exactly where to dig. With the 15 inch coil, it's much the same as the 11, uh, when pinpointing, and ideally, uh, when you're pinpointing your target, uh, when, you know, when you narrow down onto it, it's pretty much directly in the center of the coil, and directly underneath the shaft. So you can sort of safely say, you know, if you can pinpoint pretty accurately, uh, accurately, I'll say that properly, uh, basically you can sort of pinpoint it down to digging a little small square hole just around the coil there, which is exactly what we've done here. And uh, bingo, you'll hit straight on your coin. I guarantee every time, unless you need to go deeper. Let's have a look. Funny, uh, I don't know if I said that before, but I was supposed to be working today. There he is. The boss sends me a message this morning at seven o'clock and uh, says, not really uh, required today, mate. You can have the day off digging. Go detecting and enjoy. Thanks, Angus. You're a bloody legend. Absolutely, uh, absolutely love working for my boss. He is just, look, I've had some great bosses over the years, you know, some, some really good employers. Uh, I'd like to think I'm a pretty good employee too, so you know, it, it goes both ways. However, uh, my current boss at the moment, Angus, uh, you know, working for him uh, with the freight company there, uh, delivering parcels in a little truck around town. I deliver to all the shops around town, so I know a lot of the business owners. Helps me get a lot of, uh, you know, networking and uh, permissions, what have you. And then I do in the afternoon, so in the morning I do all the uh, town freight and uh, what have you, all the shops. In the afternoon, I uh, generally head off uh, around the town, my local town, in my little truck, and I deliver uh, all sorts of weird and wonderful items uh, to all these residential houses. Also, another great way to get permission. There we go, 1934, at Commonwealth, one penny, and next target, what a cracker. We're on the pennies today, aren't we? So yeah, what I was saying though, uh, good good employees in the past, you know, they've had a lot of different jobs, uh, but I tell you what, my current employer now today, Angus, uh, mate, you're a bloody legend, absolute legend. He follows me on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, he's even drumming up permissions for me. Uh, just a, just a really, really uh, great guy. I wouldn't class him just as a boss. Uh, I'd class him as a really good mate. So I'd, uh, I'm going to get down there very soon. Uh, he lives just out of town, and uh, I'm going to get down to where he lives soon. There's a little church and a little hall down there. And uh, he's got me permission for both of them. So we'll go down and uh, we'll meet Angus. Hello. All these signals that have been missed. So yeah, we'll go down one day, shoot a video down there. Funnily enough, um, the hall that he's got me permission for uh, is right beside his house. So uh, he, he, he'll probably just wander out and um, uh, come and help us dig. So and uh, see what we can find there. Awesome bloke. Let's see what this guy is. There's so many signals, as I said. What is going on? We've either missed a whole heap with the 11 inch, uh, and now the 15's picking up on them. You know, the 15 coil's just a bloody ripper, especially for the silver coins. I don't know how many silver coins we got yesterday. I think it was seven or eight. Uh, and only like six or seven pennies. Or, um, yeah, either the 15 inch coil's really hitting, hitting hard on them, or uh, we just didn't really cover this area properly when first detecting with the 11. Although we've walked over this ground, as I said, six ways from Sunday. So there we go, our next target, a 1943, a little Kanga half penny. What a bloody cracker. Awesome, it is penny. A penny day at the moment. We're starting our day off with pennies, aren't we? That's nothing. That's just a dirt impression. I thought it was a another coin there. We've had so many coin uh, coin spills from this site. 
it's just phenomenal this is probably uh, probably the uh, most productive coin spill site i've ever had uh you know you dig a hole and there'd be nothing to pull two or three uh, coins out of there so let's keep going let's see what else we can find Rightio, so we've got ourselves over the cricket pitch there. We have not really found much in between uh, until we got over this side. So we've got our first nice target here. 19, 20, 21. Sort of fixating more on a 19. So fingers crossed for our first silver there. A little sixpence, I dare say. He's got a nice little pinpoint range on him. I didn't give you a really great look there, sorry. However he seems like he's well worth the dig ground is just so nice out here to dig as you can see too the shovel just goes straight in beautiful very nice sort of sandy a uh, bit of a loamy sort of soil base here we may have been digging a little bit off there <gasps> oh there he is there look at that look at that we we're right we we're spot on i can see silver there he is let's pop him out Oh, come out of there. There we go. Ho, ho, ho. Our first silver coin. And look at the condition, would you? There we go. 1960, a beautiful sixpence straight out of the ground, as you've seen. Uh, we've not even gave him a clean up. Oh, there's the coin impression once it focuses. I love that um, sort of orange uh, look, you know, the orange patina they get. It almost makes you not want to clean them when you get home like just with a really light a very very light rub there bring him back on the knee and look at the shine just around the rim there so he's going to clean up absolute beautiful a little bit of um lemon juice there and he'll clean up perfect look at the shield in the middle the detail is still spot on advanced australia there below i know i am very shaky sorry it's still quite cold it was about eight degrees when I come out here this morning. It was like six or seven degrees yesterday when I come out. At top of 16 today. Let's throw that back in there. It's getting so dirty. Top of 16 degrees today. So not too bad, but um, that sun has just got to burst its way out through the fog. And then we'll get the jumpers off. Yes, I'm wearing two jumpers again today. It's cold, it's cold. So. Let's see what else we can get. That was quite nice, wasn't it? Straight over the cricket pitch. And we're on to our first silver coin. Let's have a look at the watch too. I'll we'll see how long that took. We started at 10.40. It's now 10.58 there. So uh, what, you just say 20 minutes. And we've snagged three pennies and a little silver. And maybe another one. Jeez, I'll tell you what, we're sort of in line, uh, right in line, with where we would have gritted yesterday. How did we miss that? It's a bit of a funny signal though. Look, the signal's not too bad. Watch what I go, watch when I go into pinpoint. Oh, it's gonna make a liar of me now. Let's just give him a dig anyway, and uh, we'll tell us, it'll tell a story that way, won't it? So, oh dear, I've lost it. I think he was on that uh, clump of grass there. Let's have another listen. I don't want to go digging a wild hole. There you go. See what the pinpoint's doing? Huge target, or it's showing that it's a huge target. So let's go out of pinpoint, back into the main screen. Now let's go back into pinpoint, see if it'll narrow it down for us. look at that look at that narrowed it down and i think there might even be two targets there and that's what it's trying to hit on it thinks it's a big target however i reckon uh, this might be either two targets one a coin one something else or it might who knows it could even be a big target let's just open that hole up a little bit bigger i'll see what's going on hopefully hopefully that's another little sixpence because he was showing up 19 on the screen there Okay, we got something in the back wall there. Right where it was hitting on too. Could be a coin. All 
or it could be a little triangle piece of scrap. Oh, look, it is too. Ha, huh, we nailed that one. Geez, we're good. We are smashing it. We can ID anything. <laughs> there we go. That's why he's come up a bit of a funny signal. Not a coin, just a little bit of uh, scrap there. And probably the, uh, the detector was probably having a trouble, a bit of trouble, not so much locating it, uh, not so much hearing the target. You know, the signal, as I said, was coming through uh, quite okay. Uh, it was something that would definitely pull me up and make me dig it, that's for sure. But it was definitely having a bit of trouble pinpointing it there, working out exactly where it was. A funny one. Now let's keep going and see what else we can find. So there you go, only about a metre or two metres away, I should say, and not too far at all. Uh, we've got our next target, which, look, that could be another sixpence too. 19, 20, 21. Nice sounding target. Beautiful, a beautiful pinpoint a diameter on it. So that is definitely going to be a coin. I'm going to put my money on it. And hopefully, uh, it could be a sixpence. A 19 can also be... Oh, look at the worms in that hole. Awesome. A 19 can also be a, uh, a little half penny there. So generally a Commonwealth half penny. Let's move that detector out of the way. But let's just hope, fingers crossed, as I said, uh, it is going to be a silver instead of the penny. Because I prefer silver any day of the week, that's for sure. We haven't even done a lap yet either. Crazy. No! It's another bit of a toy car. Probably chopped up by the lawnmower. There we go, the side of an old toy car. You can see the window frame there. Awesome, probably a little matchbox, no doubt. And we'll probably never find the rest. Bit of a shame when you find a toy car pieces like that, because you think, oh, what were they? Or, uh, you know, where's the rest of it? Never mind. It's so muddy today. So is the pinpointer. It's okay. Good excuse to clean everything up at home one day. And go through charge and uh, charge everything up and maintain it, clean it all up. The uh, Equinox definitely needs to clean up. So another bit of our toy car, it's a high signal, 27. I didn't really give you a great look there. We are going to be limited on time today. Uh, so I'm going to try and uh, really, you know, keep this, keep this going a bit. So as much as I can, but... Uh, Really keep moving as quick as I can. Because I'm on school pickup today with the boys. So come 2.30, which let's face it, when you're out detecting, time just flies. It does not take long at all. So come 2.30, we got to get out of here. There we go. Oh, you ripper. You bloody ripper. Jinx by a little toy car part. And then... Uh, next up, <laughs> out pops a little thrippence. I'm trying to work out what I'm going to say. That's bloody awesome. And that is a coat of arms thrippence. Because look at that coin impression. I'll just spin him around there. You can see the coat of arms. Isn't that awesome? Oh, there he is there. God, we're muddy. Look at that. We won't even bother cleaning him. He's come out quite nice. A little early 1918. A beautiful coat of arms thrippence. The silvers are just amazing from this site. And look, I've got to come back, you know, like, I dig in all these high numbers, and a lot of people be like, uh, what's, what's at the lower numbers? And I, I, look, I get it, I think the exact same. What am I missing, you know, especially at such a productive site like this, you know, if you can get uh, 300 pre-decimal coins out of here, uh, what is still hiding, uh, you know, what I'm thinking is, is there a gold sovereign here? If you can get 300 pre-decimal coins out of here, pennies and silvers, there's nothing to say that someone didn't drop a gold sovereign here. So, you know, I know I'm not digging out those lower numbers right now, and that's no issue, uh, because it's not like this site is, you know, 10 hours away from home, and uh, I can only access it on weekends or whatever like that. It, it's 10 minutes from home. I can access it whenever I like, and um, it's not going anywhere. So I will be back here to dig out those lower numbers. Who knows? We may get lucky and dig out a sovereign, because it's such a productive site like this, uh, with all these coins coming out, well, there's nothing to say uh, there was not a sovereign dropped here. And it's got the timeline for it, you know, it's got the, the history for it. So there would have been sovereigns come here in pockets uh, of, of, you know, parents and 
uh, what have you, coming for donation days. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know people weren't that rich back then, uh, but there would have been some people that would have been paid in sovereigns and surely, surely had them in their pockets when attending school events here and, and, and functions and what have you. Even if they weren't going to donate them, surely they would have had them in their pockets. Uh, it's just like some of the florins and that coming out, you know. I'm sure people didn't bring all that money here uh, for donation. They probably just had it in their pockets on the day and uh, lost it. Here we are finding it some hundred years on. Bloody unreal, isn't it? Uh, just love detecting. Rightio, so we're up the other end now, back near the sports shed there. We ran a lap all the way up, grabbed a sip of the coffee. I actually brought a coffee out with me today in a traveler's mug. And just on the uh, the next lap back, a pretty uneventful uh, since you last uh, seen that last target come out. It's been pretty uneventful. However, we've got our next target here. I tell you what, we're just sitting away from the sports shed too. How is that even possible? This should have been found a month ago. It is such an obvious target. So let's give him a dig. Probably going to be a penny. Probably just the fact that we've just walked, you know, straight out from the sports shed. Not even, uh, you know, detected too much around it. Like everything, uh, as I said there before, sort of set up and I just sort of wander off straight away. So I really have not done that much around this really uh, trashy area, just around the sports shed here. A lot of mixed signals uh, coming out. Just imagine, uh, as they used to pull all the sports equipment out of the sports shed, uh, how much uh, stuff would have been dropped off and lost. And you know, not only that, uh, oh, oh dear. <gasps> oh wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought that was gonna be a coin. Let me show you what I've got, because I can see it. Let's not even give them a clean up first. I think we have a police button. Oh my God. Holy mackerel, look at that. We do too. We do too. I can see police down the bottom and uh, the English crown in the middle. Let's give them a very, a very, very, uh, very light clean. I think it says South Wales. Let's have a look. Might be New South Wales. I have found a police button in the past before. A very special one too. It was an Aboriginal police uniform button out on the goldfields there. Very, very special piece. And uh, I tell you what, so is this too. Look at that. We've got ourselves a New South Wales a police button. Wow. Wow. That is my first. So there you go. Beautiful New South Wales police button. And uh, you can see the crown there in the middle. I wonder how old that makes it then. So that is really, really cool. Little, um, looks like a little buckle or something down below. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It looks quite old, doesn't it? Awesome, that is amazing. I just, a bit speechless there. Uh, that is just a ripper, ripper piece. Wow, how has that been missed? Thankfully, he's not missed anymore. He's uh, out of the ground for everybody to enjoy and see. Uh, that is just amazing. That, that is uh, a bucket lister for me. That is bloody cool. A bucket lister find for me, that right there. I tell you what, I had no idea that's what it was gonna be. Oh, I'm excited. Let's give you another look. Because I want to have another look. We can't just put these things away straight away, can we? Let's give them one more clean up. That is bloody awesome. I just love finding anything new. Anything, you know, different. Uh, not expected. Especially in the condition like that. Oh my god. I think I probably need to shut the camera off in a minute and take a few uh, happy pictures of that. A few happy snaps. That is a bloody ripper. Looks like it's silver too. He's going to clean up so nice. Absolutely perler. All right, enough, uh, enough uh, yib yabbing. Let's throw him in the pocket. I'm not going to put him in the pouch. I'm going to put him up in the top pocket and keep him nice and safe. Got a little top pocket up here and uh, saves it knocking around with the coins. We'll put him up there and I'll make sure I zip it up properly. Otherwise, he will get lost again. That was bloody awesome. All right, let's keep going. Wow. I was just hoping there was another one there then. It's, there's not. Anyway, let's keep going and uh, I'll bring you back when we find our next good target. That's a huge signal. Doesn't even interest me. Because uh, no doubt. 
just going to be a can. It's definitely not going to be a coin. That, uh, that's um, got my attention. That one there, a bit of a large signal too. However, he could easily be a toy car. The reason why I walked away from that last one just then is uh, I found so many valve stems from this site. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. What was I just saying? And look at that, they have two. We, uh, we mentioned there in one of the videos there a while ago, uh, finding all these valve stems. The top of the engine, they would have been in the cylinder head of the engine. And uh, although this does not look like a valve stem, he's rusted out pretty bad. Uh, all the other ones did. Had little rings around the top and everything like that. The old valve stems. Uh, basically though, we sort of stated that, um, you know, they might have been using them to hold down like the marquee or the tent or, or something out here for sports days and using a bit of vinyl, uh, you know, as a, as a bit of a platform for the peg. And there we go. They were just doing just that. That is definitely vinyl. You can see uh, the way it's broken there quite easily. And um, it's petrified in the dirt and broken off, snapped off, it's gone hard. But you can see the patterning there of the vinyl. So, nothing special I know. <laughs> Here we are, we walked away from that other one. Which is probably one of the, uh, probably a, a valve stem too. <laughs> we walked ourselves straight onto the next one. Oh dear, never mind. We jinx ourselves sometimes, as I said. Speaking about valve stems, we bloody find one. Yeah, we'll walk away from that other target though, because... I don't have the time to dig. Things I know that aren't going to be coins. I sort of um, sort of picked that guy as being a big signal. However, he could have easily been a little toy car or a cap gun. So, whereas that other one, I could tell he was a huge signal when going into pinpoint mode. So we'll leave him. I can always come back and dig him another day. Uh, when I've got a little bit more time up my sleeve, because time... So before, time just flies when you're detecting. Look at that, it's half past 11 already. So no time to muck around. <laughs> like we are, I think, with this signal. Let's give him a dig. I think he's deeper. Let's hope he's something good. Western Australia police force button. Victorian police force button. <gasps> Silver coin. Yes. I knew it. I guessed it straight away. <laughs> There we go. We were chasing a good signal with that one. And we've got our next little silver. Jeez, we're on fire, aren't we? We've had a bloody successful run with this site. And we've only been here for a little over a month. An old English. I'm, you know, when it first came out, I was going to say, oh, it looks like an old English. I didn't because I wasn't sure. There we have it. We just revealed that it is. Oh, awesome. Little 1903. He's not later, he's not back into the 1800s, unfortunately. And 1903, though, uh, is spot on, because that's when this school was built. So who knows, maybe he was minted in 1903 and dropped in the same year. So he's been sitting there for well over 100 years. That is awesome. He was well worth the dig. I'll tell you what, if we hadn't have probably pulled up, uh, pulled up there with the valve stems and, uh, you know, slowly walked on to that guy, who knows, we may have just quickly swung past him. So, the valve stem that probably was a lucky find uh, so as to pull us up and make sure that we, we sort of went off a bit, little bit slower. So, because when I get in a bit of a swing, I tend to, tend to get a little bit fast. It makes me have to go back and recover ground. Awesome, awesome. What was that? I heard you. You cannot hide from me. There's our next coin. We're on a run. We're on a roll. Get these jumpers off soon too, because the uh, the sun's starting to come out. I'm gonna do more of these videos too. The uh, you know just leaving the camera rolling for a lot longer. I'm gonna continue to do this. I've got a lot of lot of room on my phone now. I've uh, got a new storage uh, card and what have you. So I've got, got plenty of room just to uh, you know talk away, leave the camera going show you guys what's going on which I've thoroughly enjoyed and uh, had a lot of good feedback over too so uh, a lot of a lot of other people out there enjoying seeing and uh, you know just seeing that the in-between not just uh, okay we've got another target and 
and we'll see you on the next and okay here it is and we'll see you on the next you know uh, you don't ever see what happens in between so I know my window videos can be a little oh, a little long-winded <laughs> oh my god we are nailing it look at that geez I'm glad I'm keeping the camera rolling too we got our next silver coin they are getting bigger Basil we've got another shilling awesome this school is just phenomenal just phenomenal uh, unbelievable beautiful old early type shilling not far away from the little British thrippins I'm really glad I said I kept the camera rolling I was nearly gonna flick it off then and move you on to the next this is such a productive little area over this side Wow yesterday I think did we get a 22 or a 23 shilling uh, but there we go we've got another one a one shilling 1922 this guy's in cracker condition we're not going to clean him up anymore we do not want to scratch him have a look at that George on the back beautiful coat of arms on the front and uh, once again another great condition silver from this old school site huh the sun is coming out and I'll tell you what so are the silver coins into the pouch and uh, we're going to stand back up make sure there's no more in the hole I don't think there was uh, going to be he was a pretty clean crisp signal there so I think that might be it isn't it funny because uh, the run that we did done down here all the way back to the sports shed was really not productive at all since taking off from the sports shed we found a little button uh, and and what two silver coins or three two two or three silver coins we're just on a roll so let's keep the roll going and uh, also let's keep the camera going see what else we can snag we've got no music today either our neighbors were playing music yesterday hilltop hoods a bit of 360 uh, a bit of cheap sober a bit of techno uh, all my favourite Aussie hip hop artists though, Hilltop Woods, 360, Cheap Sober. Uh, so really good music to listen to. And we've got none of it today. So just sort of um, skipping over near the concrete there because to be honest, you're not going to find anything uh, right near the concrete like that with a 15 inch coil. Not unless it's enough away from the concrete where it's not interfering. Uh, with you know the Rio and whatnot under the concrete Like this guy here, he's a funny false signal though. We're leaving him and we're moving on So yeah, if I was going to work that little area uh, Along the cricket pitch ideally 11 inch which I've already done or I would probably be uh, hitting on it again with the 6 inch when uh, for round nine and round ten when we use that one which I think uh, is what we'll do we'll do around the sports sheds we'll do around the cricket pitch uh, we'll do around the trees uh, do around the goal posts a lot more and we'll also head up to where uh, we snagged that beautiful florin yesterday uh, just about the end of my finger there up near the uh, other end of the sports sheds and the playground because uh, it's never been done so it needs doing and yeah, we'll do it with that little six inch coil I tell you what I'll be swinging like a madman then you put the six inch coil on and uh, feels like you'd swing all day rip a little coil I'm uh, still learning its depth though and, and learning where it pinpoints exactly I feel like it uh, pinpoints a little bit further further forward than the shaft But something for me to use more in future the only reason I don't use it that much is because I can read the 11 inch coil really really well I just love the 11 inch I love the 15 inch here too funny target that one but the uh, 11 inch is just it's light enough to use all day it, uh, it covers a nice amount of ground Going to the horseshoe button with that one. Mm, we'll leave him too. 11 inch covers a nice bit of ground. You can use it all day. Oh god, we can't get away from these false signals. We're getting into a very trashy area. 
a six inch, so six inch coil. It's just a bit painful to use at, at some places. At a lot of the sites that I have, we're gonna dig him. A lot of the sites that I have, they are quite vast spaces, big open large areas. So I really do need, uh, you know, at least the 11 or the 15 inch on uh, to be able to hunt them properly. The six inch is just, as I said, it's too painful unless you're working around a playground or, um, you know, some real trashy oval around the outskirts. That is where I've used the six inch coil. To be honest, I don't do, or haven't done for a while, that much hunting around rec reserves and sporting ovals. So, just been too busy, too busy with other sites. I'll tell you what, we've still got to get to all these new permissions. We keep spending our time out here. So, it may be a little while before I, I was just telling someone the other day, a new playground in town and for our gold coin month of february i think it was we did a gold coin month just targeting the gold coins and um that little playground produced quite well there's nothing there <laughs> we're chasing a false signal on that one yeah no i'm leaving him uh little playground produced quite well i think we got nearly what 15 bucks or 20 bucks out of there uh, within a space of about 20 minutes one uh, one Sunday morning early Sunday morning it was quite nice and the playground was only about a month old so if, that, uh, if that's any indication uh, of just what it's going to produce like I mean it's been a couple of months I could probably go back there and pull 50 bucks <laughs> so fortunately it just can't be everywhere at once I need to clone myself. I've got a um I've got a mate coming down very soon. Sorry, I'm just really trying to concentrate on some of these targets and try and get through the ground as quick as I can. Uh, I've got a mate coming down very soon. Uh, Chris from Detecting Sydney. I think I mentioned Chris every video lately. <laughs> Uh, Chris has uh, made contact with me though some time ago, mentioned that he will be down my way and would love to catch up and go detecting together. And I agree, I would, I would too, I think that would be great. So me and Chris are going to get out in the next coming weeks. And um, do a bit of detecting, see what we can find. And I'm going to take him around to some of my... Uh, permissions and sites that I have here. I think we might even be doing uh, the big race course out at Marge's property. So this used to be an old pub. Some, some will remember, some may not. It used to be an old pub. And um, behind the pub uh, it was actually an old race course. And I've been hunting the pub for about five years now. I've found some amazing Amazing items, snake buckles, cricket buckles, rings, uh, old rings from the 1800s, probably fell off the publican's hand, or someone's. And um, have all the evidence, all the research on the old race course that used to sit behind the hotel. Uh, the, the bloke, um, the publican there, uh, built the, built the uh, wine shanty, uh, the pub, and then uh, not too long after, he, he obviously was trying to, get the uh, customers in, get the patrons in. So he built the race course. And it ended up becoming the local race course. And quite a popular one at that. But, do you think I could bloody find where the start or finish line is? Uh, to, you know, be able to hit on all the coins? I can't, I still can't. It's about three or four acres. Hello there. And, um, I've, I've detected, as I said, numerous, numerous times. I still cannot locate where uh, where the start and finish line was. You know, if you if you imagine a race course as a bit of an oval, obviously there's going to be a starting and a finish point somewhere. And where, where as as a as a uh, spectator, where do you stand? You stand where the finish line is and the start line is. So that's where the publican booths would have been set up. Uh, you know, and they, they used to erect uh, little booths on the ground. I've read that the uh, publican used to take liquor. Uh, up to the back paddock where the race course was from from the pub on the corner and he used to dispense liquor 
out of a little publican spruce for the day. Very cool, very cool. And what's so cool about it, the history of this uh, pub is 1860s, about 1850s, I should say, and um, leads right through, uh, look, probably about the, the early 1900s. So what I'm trying to say is anything that we find there is going to be dated from that period, isn't it? And yes, it has been hard to find. I have not even found a coin or anything, uh, not even a horseshoe or a nail related to that race course yet. However, uh, at the pub, we've had some bloody amazing success. So no doubt, oh, there he is. Our first coin for a little while there. No, oh, it's a Cedar Britannia too. We're getting some nice early coins today. Uh, so no doubt everything that we find there it will be dated similar to this guy here our old english coins which i really really love finding uh, anything australian uh, coin you know uh, design or mint is nice however i just love that really early early type coins and let's face it uh, the older the coin the better uh, the cooler i think so 1903 or 7 or something for this guy i uh, can't really tell right now keep going uh, keep this show on the road and we'll keep going and we'll clean him up later have a better look so yeah me and chris long story short as uh, chris said there the other day none of your long story shorts are short i agree but um uh, mate that's what we'll do we'll probably hit that race course up hopefully between the two of us uh, we can find a coin to know where the race course was Just starting uh finish line and uh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> there could even be a sovereign there too. You just never know. It's got the, the time period. Uh, it's got the, the history for it. You know, it's, it's got the, the spectators for it. That's for sure. It was a popular little race course by all accounts. That's a silver. Let's get him. You're not hiding in the ground for any, any longer, mate. We're coming after you. So yeah, that'd be awesome. And not only that. Uh, we can do the pub site again too. And look, the last time I did the pub site, um, I thought I'm oh, probably not going to find anything here. Uh, I've done it and done it and done it and done it. About five years now, as I said. The last time we did the pub site though, we found coins, we found a ring, another ring, uh, old old uh, publican's ring or, or spectator's ring, something. Beautiful old brass ring. Would have had a big chunky, hunky chunky stone on the top of it. Fortunately, we couldn't find that. It was gone. So, yeah, we'll be able to do that, Chris, and um, go and have a bit of a look, see what we can find down there, mate. Use the six-inch coil around the... <gasps> what do we have here? Use the six-inch coil around the pub, I suspect, and probably the big 15-inch uh, coil, or the 11, uh, out on the race course between the two of us, I'm sure. We can find something cool. Just trying to work out what this is. Looks like a little brooch. May have had a... Um, May have had like a little enamel face on the front. It's got like a little pin, what have you, on the back there. So that's what I think it's going to be. Yeah, a little enamel brooch uh, with nothing on the front. So just trying to see if I could make something out, but I couldn't. Righto. Shut that one up. We're going to shut the camera off now. And uh, if we find something good between here and there, we'll come back. If not, I'm going to get up to the end there. Stop. Get rid of this jumper. Have a quick bite to eat and a drink, and uh, we'll continue on that away. Okay, so back from some uh, quick lunch there. The sun is out too. Look out, the guns are out too. We've got the jumpers off finally. And uh, I tell you what, we've got our next coin too. Uh, I just flipped him out from this hole here that I just stood on. The plug, uh, there's something that I was, uh, flicked out there just before I went for lunch. I did not show though. So he's been sitting out on the ground for about 10 minutes now, uh, baking in the sun, getting a bit of a tan. So next up is a penny though, a Commonwealth penny. The reason why he's so dry, the dirt is so dry, as I said. He's been sitting out in the sun for the last 10 minutes. So let's give you a look. 1927, quite nice condition, apart from the outer edging there. So beautiful, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I did say I dug that there before. However, let's just say a great way to start back from lunch, a nice way uh, to start the video off anyway. So let's stand up. We uh, we're technically finished this run. I'm not going all the way to the concrete just because the big 15 inch coil, we can do it all with the six inch there. So 
Let's turn around. We better get that detector back on. We did turn him off. I uh, need to charge it. Haven't been charging it lately. It's been leaving in the boot uh, of the Commodore. And that's it. that is the result. One bar of battery. So that's all right. That'll finish us off today. No worries. They've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good battery life on these guys. So there's a lot of high signals like that around here. Very trashy signals. That sounded good. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll dig that one. We're a little bit off our, off our run there, but that's okay. Don't leave any holes in the ground. So let's give him another pinpoint, or another look, because we didn't even give him a pinpoint. Ooh, nice high signal. That could be a florin. Imagine that. Forget the penny. That would be a great way to start off uh, from lunch. So let's have a look. We'll check the time, give you a look. It's 12.03 on the watch. Let's see, we've got about two hours from now to finish off this. Which, look, I'm pretty sure we'll get it done. Florin? Florin? Could it be? Let's get the shovel in behind him. Well, well away from it, so we don't hit it. Just in case it is. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Let's go. I wanna see a big silver. Can we jink, oh. <laughs> I was, was going to say, can we jinx ourselves? No, we can't. We've just got a bottle top lid there. Why was he ringing up so high? Uh, never mind. Uh, we, we really, you know, since we started this school site, we've just killed it on the trash. So we really have not dug too much at all. Uh, every round that we've done here, uh, you know, we've done some, what, 30, 40, 50 coins, uh, and maybe only half of that being rubbish, you know, and maybe only uh, a dozen bits of rubbish, or maybe, you know, 30, 40 coins and only uh, 20 bits of rubbish. We really have had such a phenomenal run. It's like child's play. A lot of trashy signals there. Let's get away from them. I so said we are going to do all that ground for round nine and 10 with that little sniper coil. Ooh. Quite a big target, that guy. And uh, he's only just sitting on the surface. Sort of a one-way signal too. He's not a coin, we're leaving him. We're moving on. Let's find another police button. Wasn't that cool? We've got police buttons on the brain now. I haven't even done a noise cancel since I started up either. That's okay. It's running pretty quiet. I never really ground balance, you'll see. The only time I ever ground balance is very volcanic areas. This is a volcanic area per se, but not, not that much. Like, it's not intense uh, region volcanic region put it that way it's it's leading away from it so what you doing fella maybe that's our flooring 25 26 a big target uh, so yeah basically I don't ground balance too much unless I'm in the gold fields uh, or in a very volcanic area about half an hour north in that other direction uh, from here there is a very, uh, very sort of, well, quite a volcanic region. You know, you're getting into it more so there. And there's a lot of ironstone and volcanic rocks and, and just, you know, like you can even pass over the rocks with the detector and get a signal. So very, very hard area to work. You're constantly rechecking. Every time you swing, you get a beep and a, a chirp and you think, oh, what was that? You go back, nothing there. So you're constantly, you know, half an hour that way, some of the sites can be so tricky to hunt. Uh, you're constantly rechecking targets all the time. Only to find there was nothing there. So, can be challenging. That's what makes it fun though, fun though isn't it? 
There we have our next penny. Why are all these big coins? You know, I expected to find a lot of little coins in these last couple of hunts, and we are. We're, we're hitting on a lot of threepences and sixpences, even the one and two cent coins. It's just, uh, just amazing. These big coins still exist. So, because uh, I said we have walked over this ground for the past, or over a month now, we've been detecting out here every bloody free chance we get. Uh, and you know, walking over this ground for a month, like it, it's it's quite a big area. Uh, but with me and Zave here, it hasn't uh, hasn't taken us long to sort of uh, do a few laps and uh, clean up a lot of the obvious signals. So why that one's still there? He's obviously been caught between a swing and completely missed, or it's just not a bit of ground that. Oh look, it's got to be a bit of ground that I've walked over. Surely, surely, just missed him. Easily done. And look, I am certain, 110% certain, if we really thoroughly gridded that ground again, uh, you know, we did it yesterday, we did it again today, the last six rounds we've sort of, uh, you know, walked over this ground. Yesterday and today, though, we've really thoroughly gridded that area. Uh, I'm sure if we did it again, there'd be another penny sitting there, or another silver. I'm certain of it. No site is ever fully done. So, I think... Um, What? Like that one there, such an obvious tone. You hear, heard when I swung over it. You cannot miss that, doesn't matter how quick you go. Ready? Boom, boom. Still there. That was a pretty intense swing then, wasn't it? Crazy, crazy guy. Righto, let's give him a dig. Pretty obvious signal. So he's bound to be a coin. I think I dug off then. Let's dig back a bit. Ground is so nice to dig out here. I'm very, very lucky. I don't mind sharing my sights too. Like I mentioned there that Chris has come down there before. Uh, you know, like I've had a few people contact me in the past and say, oh, you mate, uh, would you be up for a hunt? Uh, yeah, I'd love to come hunting with you. So uh, I'm, I'm always up for it. It's not a worry. I love meeting new people. So cannot wait, cannot wait. Oh, another big pan -ay. Wow, what are all these coins doing? All these big coins doing anyway. It's just phenomenal. 1911, that guy, and in absolute cracker condition. So just gave him a very quick wipe up uh, on the jeans there. Let's have a look at the other side. Oh, the other side might be pretty good too. Generally, it's one side or the other. Looks like we fluked him on both this time. Oh, not too bad at all. One to share and show at the end of this video anyway. So... Yeah, so really cool. Cannot wait for Chris to come down. I said, uh, not uh, not greedy. And look, anything he finds, uh, it's it's just sort of uh, a rule that I've always stuck to, uh, even when Brandon comes out with me. Uh, and I take him to all these sites and what have you. Uh, I say to him, mate, if you dig it, you you know you find it, you dig it, you keep it. It's as simple as that. I do not want what you find. And if you find it, you put the hard yard in how to find it. Mate, I don't want it. As much as I do, it's yours. And that's why it should be. Silver. It's the same as uh, young Xavier there. Uh, I do sort of uh, help him out a little bit sometimes and find targets for him. But I say to him, if you if you if I find it and you dig it and uh, you know find it yourself, like I may find it first off with the detector, but then he follows through and digs it and what have you. I always say to him, if you uh, you want to take the time to dig it out, mate, and uh, locate it, it is all yours, buddy. I don't care if it's a gold sovereign. You weren't it. I think that's the way it should be, shouldn't it? Silver, 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 silver. I think we lost him. Okay, got something else going on there. A funny guy. Let's bring in so you can have a look at what I'm looking at. It's a nothing. Yeah, okay, a little bit of a tag once he focuses there. A little bit of a tag off something. I don't know. Nothing that we want to concentrate on or waste any time on though. So down she goes. Shut that plug up. Righto, let's keep cracking along. That damn shovel. I will say too, this end of the oval is probably the lessest. You know, if I've spent any time anywhere, 
uh, it's up that end of the oval, sort of from where I'm standing now, back towards the fence line. Uh, everything to the right hand side of us that you're seeing now, really, you know, I've done it, but by geez, it's not very much. So we could be onto another florin coming out in that last bit of patch there. We'll keep going, and uh, if we find anything good, we'll come back and we'll give you a look. Bingo, Basil! We've got our next target, and look what we've found. We've got another silver coin. How cool is that? We're just pretty much, you know, like where I flicked the camera off there a second ago, uh, we're at the end of the cricket pitch here. Uh, we've pretty much walked about another metre. Got a very sketchy, a false sort of sounding signal. Just good enough for me to dig, though. I remember I got my iron bias really low uh, down at zero, so we are getting a few of those false signals, as you've seen in the last few videos. However, they can be rust, or I should say, they can sometimes be rust and false out. However, majority of the time they are silvers, especially if it's that nice, repeatable enough sound to dig. So, 1925, a beautiful, beautiful cracker condition. I'm just amazed at the coins coming out today and the condition that they're in. A beautiful little uh, coat of arms thrippence there though. So, Advanced Australia, Shield, Emu, Kangaroo, uh, we've got everything going on. Some really, really neat detail there and uh, in great condition. Awesome, awesome. We are going to have quite the tally of silvers today, aren't we? Again, who knows? We may, as I said, we did like, what, eight silver coins yesterday or seven or eight, and we only did like six pennies. So here, here at the school site, then we did wander across the road and did a few more pennies. But for just counting at the school site here, um, let's get that shovel out of the way. There could have been a coin spill there. Just counting at the uh, school site here yesterday, we did extremely well on the silver coins uh, compared to the pennies. And who knows, it's uh, shaping up like it's going to be that way again today. Which, uh, no complaints here, that's nice, that's awesome. Uh, that dollar coin that Dominic had yesterday. <laughs> funny kid, funny kid. Uh, the dollar coin Dominic had yesterday that I gave him that we found here. Uh, guess what I spotted on the lounge room floor this morning? Lost it already. He's a funny lad. There's our next silver coin. Very faint, very uh, sort of sketchy signal. However, repeatable enough to dig. I should probably give you a little bit of a, a better listen there. And um, you can hear for yourself. So let's do that. Let's not move the coil just yet. We're going to horseshoe button there, just quickly. You can see there, a little bit of rusty signal, like you get a, a little bit of a negative signal there. It's uh, still a clean coin signal though. You can hear that high pitched uh, tone, high pitched town, high pitched tone coming through quite clearly. Definitely, definitely a nice deep silver coin. We're in the shade now too, which is really, really nice. It's funny, the fog, like it's, it's not a cold day, like it is a cold day with the fog, but behind the fog, it's actually quite a warm day. As soon as that fog clears uh, from the sun, you know, the sun just bursts out and bam, it's like uh, 15 degrees already. I know, very, very hot, not really. But you know, to go from like six, seven degrees, freezing cold this morning, two jumpers on, foggy, couldn't see your hand in front of your face, uh, to now where it's, uh, you know, quite warm. And nice to be in the shade now. It's a bit of an out of control hole there, isn't it? <gasps> there he is. I was just going to grab a spoonful of dirt. I can see the rim's edge of a coin. Ah! Oh, he's nothing special though. <laughs> we were tricked. We were tricked. Never mind. Oh, were we? Yeah, we were. I was going to say. A uh, little one cent coin there though. I thought he was going to be something different for a second. A little one cent coin. Nothing to babble about. So straight into the pouch. We'll shut this messy hole up. No one is the wiser. We've got our next target. A nice high signal this guy. Look what's about to pop out. My favourite. A toy car. A little matchbox racer by looks. I don't think he's matchbox really. <laughs> he's going to be some Chinese made one. There we go. I think he might be a Hot Wheels. Let's have a look. Give him a bit of a quick clean up. I can't see nothing. Made in Malaysia, maybe. Uh, really cool. 
Little Speed Demon Racer. Vroom. Rightio, so on our next lap now, we made it up to the sports shed. We've made it all the way back here on the return run. We've got our next target. Ones I can find in there is. All the grass looks the same, doesn't it? It's nice uh, coming back here yesterday. Seeing it all cut because I really didn't expect that. You know, the, the original grass length uh, is up to about your waist. Uh, it's up to about that pile of grass there. So imagine if... Um, yeah, imagine if it didn't get cut for six months and it got let go. And we we, uh, we couldn't finish off all our rounds. It wasn't that long, but it was starting to get to a length where uh, it was making me lose a bit of depth. You know, I like to sort of, uh, sort of hum the coil, you know. When I'm detecting, I don't bring the coil up here, uh, away from the ground. I bring it into the grass here, and I let it sort of just skim through the grass. And it sort of sits on the surface, and you don't have to... I know it sounds silly, but you don't have to um, lift the detector as such. You can just sort of skim it uh, along the grass and sort of use it to cushion uh, your swing. I know that sounds silly, but for anybody that does it, you'll know exactly what I mean. And that way, you're gaining the best depth. If you have grass up here, you really can't push through it, uh, especially the green grass. It's just um, going to do damage to your coil. So we always try and... Uh, detect as low as possible but it's definitely nice to be coming to these sites uh, that are trim and clean so we can get that best depth we've got a commonwealth half penny i've just seen george on the back and there he is 19 19 i think maybe 13 let's have a look again <gasps> it is two a 19 13 a little one half penny in quite nice condition too coins are still coming out we're getting to, uh, nearer, as said, to those back goalposts. Uh, we just dug that little toy car out over there. Had a heap of mixed signals too, uh, following after it, which I was nearly going to film, but I didn't. Because uh, they might be pipes or something under the ground. And uh, as I've mentioned, all stuff that we will attack with the six inch. And we'll probably be able to make a lot more sense out of it. That could be a florin. Very high signal. Look, we're going to dig him. We could be chasing nothing there. Uh, we are going to dig him. Keep my eye on him. I grab for the shovel. Because uh, if that's a florin, look, if it's rust, it's rust. We'll move on. If that's a florin, ooh, wouldn't that make the day pretty bloody special? Any day is a good day when you're getting a silver coin, multiple silver coins, makes for an even better day. And well, a florin just tops that day for me. Like what happened yesterday. I think a dog. Hear him? I think a dog's a little bit upset. Where is he? What do we got? Oh! A saucepan handle. <laughs> That's why he's ringing up funny number and uh, such a high signal too. 39, 38 as you've seen on the screen. Not a florin. It may not be uh, may not be meant to be today. It just may not happen. I didn't think it was going to happen yesterday though. And bingo, uh, we nailed one. What, probably uh, 10 metres that way. Probably about where the end of my finger is. Yeah, we could wander over there and probably find the hole. And... Um, Detect away from there. See what we can find. Also another spot though. For the six inch. Big signal. A funny signal. Let's keep the camera rolling. And let's get him out. I only found two uh, complete cap guns from this site. Bloody amazing too. Probably some of the finest cap guns I've ever found uh, ever uh, we had the old uh, two of them or both of them come from the back corner there uh, both on the same day within about an hour of each other too you couldn't make that stuff up anyway and we got the florins that day too phenomenal so we got the two cap guns over the back there uh, one was a Texan junior and one was a, um, a little Australian made mighty might cap gun my favorite that's a bolt that guy I knew he was a funny signal. 
And he's just going off on all the rest of the dirt there. If there is something there, we'll tell with the detector anyway, not the pinpointer. So, bloody awesome to find those cap guns. We have found, that's all she wrote. Have found other bits and pieces of cap guns. The Zave even found one too. But um, nothing substantially intact. All oh, their painful signals as we near, uh, near our way to the post here. They're not clean. Oh, maybe that guy's. We're gonna dig him. Oh, there goes the dog again. He goes off every time we pinpoint. <laughs> Probably thinks it's another dog howling. Oh. Hear that gravel? Hear that? Gravel, we're on a gravel base. So this could be a false, a false, falsing out signal there. So it gets very, very trashy leading up to those goalposts. And uh, to be honest, I haven't actually done, I have a little bit with the 11 inch, but I haven't really done much the other side of those goalposts either. So more, plenty, uh, plenty more activity room for us here, isn't there? Heaps. We could be here for 20 rounds yet. I think we're chasing something false here too. Again. Yeah, look, we're going to leave him. He's all over the shop. See the pinpointers going off everywhere. See the really big target buried down further. Uh, and to be, to be honest, we don't have time. It's something we don't want to know about today. So we're not going to know about him. We're going to leave him. It's quite okay with me. I think um, when I first started detecting, that was the hardest thing to, to sort of get my head around. Sounds so good, doesn't it? A lot of rusty signals there, though. It's just a very trashy, very trashy area when you get around here. So we're going to leave him, something for us to work on with the smaller coil. Now something that I had to learn to do when I first started detecting though, is try and walk away from signals. Because um, I sort of realised after a while there, of digging rusty nails and chasing false signals. Uh, it's not that much fun. And not only that, if you walk away from them, you know, some might go, well, what are you what are you walking away from? I completely agree. However, if you spend your whole time, and I watch people do it all the time, uh, <laughs> I won't name names, but there's one bloke that comes out with me in particular on a few of my videos. Brando, whoops, I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> he won't mind me saying it though. He, I do tell him a bit there sometimes. Uh, he, um, he has trouble determining what signals are, and you know, he sort of says, "Oh, should I dig this? It's it's a sketchy uh, 20, 23." Uh, and I say to him, "Well, give it a dig, mate, if it sounds good enough, because that's the only way you're going to be able to identify what it is." And let's face it, the longer you muck around with it. The less, uh, less other signals that you'll get a chance to go hunt and chase and, and find and dig and locate those items. So, you know, it's a bit of a catch-22 the way I see it. Like, I could have uh, mucked around with that target for a lot longer. Who knows? Maybe there's a florin hiding there. Maybe it's just junk. Uh, so by me walking away, I've now put myself onto this next signal. And I know it's a lot cleaner, crisper. And I know it's potentially going to be something good. I can't can't 100% uh, say that. Could be a bottle top. However, if I just mucked around with the same target for the next half an hour looking for it, and I did that with every target all, all day, uh, you're not very productive, are you? And uh, the sort of what I've learned over the years, you know, that I had to learn from the get-go when I first started, you muck around with those too long, uh, you're really knocking down your efficiency and knocking down the amount of stuff that you're going to find for the day. Because if you just keep moving, 
you get onto those next targets, like this guy, not a coin. Lucky we didn't uh, uh, predict him to be a coin. I did say it might have been, it may not. Anyway, shotgun shell. Uh, if you just move on though, let's face it, a lot of these sites you can go back to. If you move on and keep going, you're still on. Uh, then basically you can keep that efficiency up and get a good amount of fines on the board at the end of the day. It's not about how much you find either. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you have to go out and, and have this huge tally. There's some days I go out and find bugger all. They're the days that don't make it to film. So I do try and show the reality as much as I can. But there is also, I do also have bad days, you know, where I go out and dig uh, 10 one and two cent coins, a one dollar coin. If I'm lucky, I get a penny and a ton of rubbish with it. Sixpence. So yeah, basically just, just keep going. You know, you can either spend that time um, and look, Brandon, as I said there, Brandon mucks around a little bit sometimes and he sort of questions me and whatnot. And I say to him, look, if you're having trouble, mate, just, just move on, shut the hole, move on. You can come back to it another day or move on to something better. Because let's face it, there's, uh, there's plenty of targets to dig at these sites and if you spend your time just uh, concentrating on the one target you'll never get on to the next this is going to be not a coin what do we got oh, i was hoping it was like a little lead toy soldier then oh he's part of a he's part of a formula one race car there we go i can see the driver's the driver's cockpit and the side guards there. There's really not much left of this guy at all. However, that was what he'd be. Little Formula One, a cockpit of a racing car. Speed Demon. Right. I so said, let's kick this show on the road. It's gotta be pushing on one o'clock by now. Next one. Get him out back in the shade which is nice so I like to try and be as efficient as I can digging uh, get them out get on to the next I teach Savi the same thing too if you're having too much trouble yell out otherwise move yourself onto the next coin or the next target which could potentially be a coin I mean we just dug those last three targets out uh, since stopping at that really false sketchy one and I started yakking and uh, we've put ourselves now onto a coin so exactly what I was saying if we had to spend uh, another 10 minutes on that hole there behind us a sketchy signal it would have took us that much longer to get onto this guy and let's face it if you uh, output all your energy into the false targets uh, you get frustrated and angry and hungry and thirsty and hangry you're not going to want to continue on and persist for a long day are you uh, whereas if the coins are sort of coming out, you know, if you you keep the show moving, you keep it all going and keep it efficient, uh, I do find that it keeps it more enjoyable. Because there's nothing worse than spending half an hour on a target, it turns out to be rust, you get to the next one, it's sketchy, you don't know whether to dig it because you don't want to you don't want to go through the same thing again, half an hour of chasing rust. So it takes the fun out of it. Hence why I like to cherry pick some of these sites. Because if you're time limited, or well, you just want to have a really good time, you come here and dig these high signals. That one uh, we're leaving. You come there and dig those high signals, and uh, you go away with a smile on your face at the end of the day, because uh, you have a nice little haul uh, to go home and clean up and enjoy. We're getting up to the trashy era again, so I'm being a, a little bit less... Uh, uh, stressful about digging those targets, those sketchy signals, because I know it's a very trashy area up the back here. All the schools used to, I mentioned this in all my videos, school videos, but all the schools used to burn off all their rubbish up on the fence line. That's not to say coins and that won't be in there. But a lot of the time it's bottle tops and a lot of rubbish. That sounds good. Just set the horseshoe button on quickly. Really nothing there that way.
very fine. Very fine. Let's leave him. What was that? Target there. Target there. Two targets. I've got a double target right there. Let's go grab the shovel. One's on the surface, one's sitting down below. Could be a cap gun. Cap guns normally ring in, I'll say too. Uh, most cap guns I've ever found, they ring in around 20, 21. Sort of, sort of, you'd sort of put them from like 18 through to 23 uh, to sort of cover all bases. Because like anything, some cap guns are small, some are big, uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, some are deep, some are shallow. But I can guarantee you, they'll sound horrible. You won't even want to dig them. They sound that bad. Uh, they sound like a chopped up can, a cap gun. And um, there he is there. Look at that, old toothpaste tube leading up the back here. What a surprise. So yeah, 18 to 23 really covers it for the cap guns I find. Uh, if, you, if you're digging those numbers, you know, you might get a solid 18 or a jumpy 18 and 19, whatever. Could be a cap gun. You could get a jumpy 21, 23. Could be a cap gun. And they really don't sound that desirable. Like uh, the, the, the two that I found there over in the back corner, they sounded like chopped up Coke cans, to be honest. Big targets. Jumpy targets. Not like that one there. And um, turned out to be two wonderful old cap guns. So awesome, awesome. Just got to dig all those high numbers. We hit something then. Hopefully that wasn't a cap gun. Wouldn't that be a, a bugger? It's a stone. Right, he's in the back there. He's still hiding. Let me get my right hand. Because I'm a little bit of a wild digger with my left hand. I'll end up hitting it. Oh, there he is. There he is, right there. I can see copper. And uh, that is a little penny or half. Oh, no, full penny. I was going to say half. That's a full. That's a full any day of the week. And a rue penny. And I think young Dominic has hit him. Even though Dom's not here today, we're going to blame him. Yeah, Dominic struck him on the side. Dom and Nick. Can't take that kid anywhere. Never mind. Into the pouch. We're not going to be able to get a date right now. That's okay. What is the time? One o'clock on the watch. So we've got, yeah, look, about an hour. About an hour to cover this last section. We have done some Ks today, haven't we? We've done some steps. We've done some swinging. It's paid off though. We have a funny, faint one there. Sound of sensitivity up a bit. Oh, it's tempting me to dig him. Get in the horseshoe button. Yep, we're digging him. The horseshoe button just tells that little bit better story. Uh, listening, you know, you, you, you can listen to the rust and the target in the hole. If, if there's rust and a coin in the hole, you know, you'll hear the, the low uh, rust sort of omni, ominous tone. And then um, you'll hear that high pitch tone mixed in with, uh, with it as well, which generally can be a coin. I think we might have been duped on this occasion. Maybe. Let's uh won't spend too much time on him. Let's just have a look in the back there quickly because he's sort of leading over as to where we just got that other penny. Nah, it's wasting my time. Let's move you on. I uh, thought that might have been a bit of a coin spill there. Turns out it was not. Let's take it back out of the horseshoe button. The only reason I do that, it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit uh, easier to listen. And uh, when I first started, I used to run the horseshoe button on and hear everything. But, um, you know, just to pick out those nice high tones, you don't really need it on. 
it just makes everything more confusing because you've got so much more to listen to. But I also know plenty out there that um, that leave it leave it on all the time. So I just um, put it on as needed. Funny guy. Nice enough for us to dig though. Might be mixed in with a bit of trash there. This is um, pretty much going to finish us off soon. Once we do one or two more laps, uh, they might nearly do us. So we're nearly be at the end of the, the goalpost there. And call it a day for round eight. We've killed it here. I wonder what the, uh, wonder what the total tally of coins uh, we're going to have here for this site. What? It's going to be over 300. It could even be 400. We're easily going to get over 300 though. And that's just pre-decimal coins alone. Uh, that's not talking the one and two cent coins, the, the, the few one and two dollar coins that we've pulled out of here, including Dominic's one that's uh, on the lounge room floor as we speak. So look, if we counted all the coins up, we could be, yeah, up to nearly 500. Pretty phenomenal to think about really, isn't it? Like if I come here at the start of this video and said, right, we're gonna pull out, oh, that's rust. Not, not right, we're gonna pull out rust. That is rust in the hole there. If I said to you that at the start of this video, round one, yeah, rusty. Uh, if I said we're gonna pull out over 300 predecimal coins out of here, you would have laughed at me. I would have laughed at myself. Um, I've done, done it at some sites before, but they've got a lot more activity with them, attached to them. So it makes sense. This site, I'll tell you what, I would never have expected. Uh, I would have expected, look, maybe 100 coins, 100 predecimal coins, and never, what, over 300, nearly 400. That's just crazy. That's gonna be a coin. He's right on top of the leaf. We won't move that leaf, we'll leave him there. We ought to know exactly where we're digging. I sometimes do that too if I don't leave the coil over the top of the um, target. I'll try and ID or spot something on the ground that sticks out, like a leaf or a stick or whatever, and uh, remember to come back to that and dig underneath it. Let's have a look. Not another false signal, hopefully. Oh, there he is, a coin, uh, but only a one cent coin. We've been talking and yabbing away all that time just to show you a bloody one cent coin. Never mind, another coin, isn't it? A lot of the uh, one, two cent coins too, I will say quickly, a lot, a lot will probably know this. That's something that I don't think I've ever mentioned in my videos. However, the one and two cent coins, a lot of them were made uh, due to uh, the melting down of the pennies. So there you go, a bit of history for you. When you find a one or a two cent coin, chances are, I've been distracted again. Chances are it's, um, could have even been melted down from a penny. Oh dear, this could be another one. Another one cent penny. <laughs> Whoa, a stick or something there. I'm missing Dominic and Xavier today, I tell you. I'm missing my little mates. Out here by my lonesome, talking to myself in the middle of this paddock. I wonder what the neighbours think if they hear me. And they look, like they look over and they're like, what is that guy doing? He's talking to his hand. He's talking to his phone. Or he's talking to the ground. What a weirdo. It's alright, I've sort of gotten over that. The, the, the what people think of you detecting. Because um, it used to really, not really get to me, but it used to sort of um, being in the public eye. You used to always make you a little bit embarrassed, like, what's he doing? Oh, he's, he's digging holes. Oh my God. What's he gonna find? He's looking for gold, I bet ya. <laughs> Rusty nail. Damn. It's generally the consensus you get though. A lot of people go, what are you looking for, mate? Yeah, yeah. Chasing gold, are ya? I always say to them, no, there's no gold down here, buddy. Um, sort of put it back at them, but um, 
because that is the most it's like when you're washing your car what's the first person that walks past what do they say oh you can do mine next when you're finished <laughs> very very punny very punny um basically though yeah i do get uh, i have over the years got a bit of that oh what are you what are you looking for your lunch money or just just some just some awkward comments like that I almost say rude comments but then you do get like you know that's only been a, a small percentage i've i've had i look i've had and met so many amazing wonderful people that come up and approach me and say i'm oh, just wondering what you're doing and i tell them and they're like oh that is just amazing or fascinating or you know what's your best find or how long you've been doing it for or like i just love networking connecting with those sorts of people the people that are you know interested in and genuinely intrigued what you're doing and uh, once they start a conversation with me, look out, you won't get away. So always happy to share and talk and uh, show what I've found or whatever it be. I just love it uh, to those people that are really nice. I had a lady approach me there one day, about a year or two ago. Bit of rubbish, that guy. I wonder why we're getting up into the very trashy area. Had a lady there approach me one day, though. Her name was Rosemary. I've still got her phone number. <laughs> I know, I'm uh, out and about in parks getting old ladies numbers. And she was an elderly lady too. Uh, it's one of my partner has me some days. Anyway, um, lady come up to me, Rosemary, lovely lady. And she's like, just wondering what you're doing. And I told her, she goes, oh, that is amazing. And what do you found and all that sort of stuff. And I showed her our coins and silvers that I'd, I'd found for that day. I remember the day perfectly. I found a heap of, of silver coins in a gutter in a, uh, right where I pulled the car up that day. It's just, just phenomenal. So she's like, oh, um, I would love to do something like that. You know, unfortunately, I'm probably a little bit old now. And I don't know how the hips and the knees and all that would go. And um, she said to me, she goes, would your detector, another bit of rubbish. Lucky I'm telling a very intriguing story, merchants. Soft, drop, uh, soft drink lid, that one. Very trashy area as we work our way to the back here. She said to me, would your detector find old silverware, you know, silver plates and, and dishes and spoons and cups and platters? And I said, oh, yeah, definitely. She goes, my mum, she goes, when I was a little girl, targets everywhere. And she said, my mum took me down to the creek, the local creek, and she said, I can remember throwing in all mum's silverware uh, into the creek, into the bank of the creek. Uh, she just she just threw it out. Reason being is, uh, she said she was only a little girl at the time. But she said, reason being is she uh, said mum and dad uh, had come into some money. Uh, she didn't elaborate whether it was an inheritance or whatnot, I don't know. Uh, anyway, come into some money. So she obviously upgraded all her silver platter and silverware, which was very common from about from the early 1900s and um this little girl had to go down to the river with her mum carrying all the old silverware and dump it in the bloody creek out with the old in with the new and look we do the same today i know it sounds crazy we do the uh, same sort of stuff today our couch get a gets a rip or a tear in it or you know the leg gets broken we throw it out we get a new one a little one half penny there a kangaroo one can't get a date right now We'll check him later. But, um, yeah, we live in a very wasteful society now. Uh, it's, a, it's a throwaway world, really. Even cars, uh, over the last couple of you know, decades, uh, two decades, whatever, cars have even become a throwaway item. Most people only buy a car and, and uh, run it for five years. It's worth nothing. Uh, only with a few Ks on it, so. Anyway, she threw out all the silverware down into the creek and Rosemary asked me would um, would I ever like to go and have a look to try and find it the only problem with that is it was her family farm she grew up there for many years got married out that way and ran it uh, with her husband but then they sold it and retired and moved into town so she knows where it is uh, on the creek and on the bank but she does not own the property anymore. It's not her uh, family farm anymore. So we'd have to go with Rosemary, tee up and get permission 
uh, to go there with the new landowner and check out if we can find all the silver buried on the creek. Anyway, very trashy here, so we won't keep you. Uh, we'll turn the camera off now and we'll come back uh, when we find something good, uh, well worth showing anyway, and putting the camera on for. Okay, so I think we've done pretty good today. We've made it all the way up the other end. We're gonna stop in line with this uh, big pile of grass here. As I said, around, those, uh, around the goalpost, I'm really not too concerned about getting to with this big coil on. So a couple more targets up where we got the flooring yesterday. And then I've got this one and another one in front of it. And then we are gonna get out of here and get home and um, shoot yesterday's conclusion video because I still haven't even done that yet. I've been too busy. There goes our dog, uh, the dog again, our friend. So shoot the conclusion video when I get home. I've also got to uh, mow the front lawns either before or after I got the boys, probably after. Because uh, everybody else in the street has mowed their lawns. I haven't yet, so I'm making the street look bad, aren't I? <laughs> making it look messy. And they're not too bad. They do need doing though. Little nail, that guy. We nailed him. Let's check there's nothing else there. Alright. Was a bit iffy on that target. Didn't think too much of him. Uh, we did just uh, snag a penny over there. I didn't film it though. I should have. I should have. So let's go after this last target that we've got in front. I didn't show you it before. Very high target. Uh, one, two bars of depth. He did show one, now he's showing two. I reckon that's uh, gonna be a toy car. So that'll, uh, that'll happily finish me off for the day. Does not have to be a coin. Uh, can be a little toy car. Oh, or a cap gun. Oh, my Lord. That'll easily finish us off for today. There you go, that was a high one too. What was saying before? 2018 through to 23, he was quite a high one. So take note of that. He's uh, He was a 30 sort of jumping around. So you could even put him up a little bit higher there. Oh, we might have more. He's missing his barrel. I'm gonna give you a look in a minute. Now that is a great way to finish today off. I thought there'd be another cap gun here. Whether they come out in, ooh. You get back up there, mister. You sit up there safely. We don't want to hit you. I thought there might be another one here or a few more here. I just, I didn't think they'd come out in too good a condition. I'm a bit surprised with that one really because he's only missing the barrel. And uh, I've got quite a few of those at home. The old Texan Juniors. So I could put a barrel with it and match him up. Let's go down one more stab. We should get him if it's a barrel. Hopefully I don't cut him in half. <laughs> Otherwise, no point us retrieving it, is there? I said, I do have a few of these at home. Got a lot of, a lot of cap guns at home. I think about 30 of them now. Oh, there we go, we're chasing a rusty nail. Okay, let's not worry about the rusty nail. Let's have a look at this bloody awesome cap gun. Trigger's still there. We've got the hammer at the back there. He's still there. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm seeing. The hammer's there. You should have a cow on this side uh, and a steer on the other side. And then the other matching uh, gun to this guy here. Oh, look, he moves. Kapow! Um, <laughs> I just love these toy guns. The other uh, matching gun, so these would have come in a set, a set of two, a pair, so you could shoot your brother and sister. Um, basically, the other one would have the horse head on it. So this, this has got the steer's head or the bull's head. And the other guy has the, the horse head. What I'll do is I'll bust out a couple uh, from my collection once home and I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what they look like in great condition too. I've got a couple at home that I picked up from market there uh, in my display case. Because uh, over the years digging and finding all these wonderful treasures, toy Lesney matchbox cars and marbles and cap guns are my three main things. So if I'm ever in an uh, antique market store or a shop or something, uh, you, you betcha, that's, that's the three things I'm looking for. Toy cars, cap guns uh, and of course marbles so I have bought a few at home and they are in amazing condition in working condition I've even got a, an old leather uh, holster from the 1950s uh, that actually still fits Dominic and uh, it looks just it just looks amazing so I might even bust a few out and uh, try and share and show a few of them uh, once home and uh, next to this guy so you can really have a look so little junior written on the side there he's hard to see with the sun junior and on this side, it'll say Texan. 
look out look out awesome stuff really really awesome stuff what a great day uh, i really really appreciate you guys watching and i really hope you've enjoyed uh, today's uh, reality of metal detecting round eight i tell you what it's um it's been a phenomenal run that we've had here really phenomenal so anyway guys we will be back for round nine uh, we're going to be working this very trashy area quite you uh, off <laughs> This very trashy area here, we will be making our way up to the playground. Uh, we're going to be working around the sports sheds more. Uh, we're also going to be working underneath those trees where the kids would have been playing with all their matchbox toy cars, I'm sure. And uh, also working this very, very trashy end of the oval. It's funny because that end is quite clean. Uh, this is the most trashy area where they uh, must have been burying a lot of their rubbish at one point. So. That said, that is about it for us today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. We will now get home, uh, clean up everything we've got today, and show you a look. So we'll see you there. Okay, so welcome back there, guys. We've got you in the back sunroom now, and uh, ready to take you through a look at what we did today. Uh, we've got round eight here on the board. So I'll just quickly share and show how we had. Uh, let me start from the start. I'm going to get confused otherwise. Round one, round two. Round three, I don't really have them in order, sorry. Uh, back over here to round four, round five, and lastly is round six on the corner. Now, if we jump back over here, as I said, I don't have them in order. Round seven uh, that we just shot there, what, two days ago, uh, and round eight that we just shot yesterday. So let's zoom in, give you a look at round eight, and we'll start with the pennies up the top here like we do uh, normally and uh, show you a look. So we've got the roo pennies, the full roo pennies up the top. We've got the half roo pennies down below. Uh, three little one cent coins. I was going to say a couple of little one cent coins there. Uh, I will just give you a look at this guy too. We also had an old Cedar Britannia, a 1907. So a few years after the school was built, that guy, what a cracker. Uh, next up, over onto the right hand side, we have the Commonwealth pennies, the full pennies up the top and the half pennies down below. I followed through with a little two cent coin there beside him. So uh, also in the middle there, my favorite is the silver coins. And I just cannot believe that we're still even plucking silver coins out from this site. Uh, let me just steady up there a little bit and give you a look. We've got a 1922, a one shilling, a 1960 sixpence. In the middle there down below, an 1885 early uh, English threepence. Uh, beside that guy to the left is a 1918. And on the right hand side, we have a 19. A 25 or 3. It's a bit of hard to, hard to read there. I'm going to say 25 and 1925 looking through the camera there. So I will just say very, very quickly, we'll bring this guy up here. And we'll travel up to the top to round 7 there. And you see there below, we've got the 1921 in round 7. And now we've got the 1922 the very next day. So what are the chances? Just a fluke, that guy there. 1921 and then a 1922. And the 1922 here that we've got is not as rare as the one there that we found in round seven, uh, the 1921. The 1921 uh, shilling only had half a million made. The 1922, uh, the guy in the camera right now, the year after, there was some, what, two or three million made. So still uh, quite a rare coin, that shilling there, and not as rare as the one up above the 1921. So back in now, we'll finish off and uh, show you what, what else we got there. And we've got the lovely old brooch. What an amazing piece. As I said, just silver gilded, and he's uh, he's lost the pin on the back there. He's snapped off on that little uh, pivot, pivot uh, hinge there. So we've also got another little brooch there, nothing on the front, and just the pin snapped off on the back. Uh, all a uh, little toy car, the little uh, Coney a Speed Demon Racer. He is uh, a Honda Civic 2006, made in Malaysia, and he's a he's a no-namer. So almost look like Hot Wheels with that little emblem in the middle, but I don't think he is. So next up is the Junior Toy Cap Gun. And look, I did not get any of my cap guns out of my cabinet. Uh, what I was going to do is throw up the uh, top left corner a video of uh, my cap gun and toy Lesney car collection. If you'd like to give it a look, be sure to uh, finish up this video and then jump over onto the next and I'll tell you what, you, you'll be glad you did because we have some absolute ripper toy cars and cap guns there to show. Lastly, uh, and I want to leave this guy till last. He is a, he's a bit of a hard piece to see. What we'll do is we'll turn him towards the light and we'll sit the camera right down on him. And I may even try and bring in a little bit more there and, and hold as steady as I can. And lastly, this is a New South Wales Police 
uniform button. Now, I'm a bit, bit sorry, uh, I have not done any research on this guy just yet. Naughty, naughty Luke. Uh, basically, though, uh, I would have liked to have sort of shared and uh, shown, you know, the exact age of this button. So, uh, I have not done any research. So off the top of my head, I don't know what it is. Uh, however, what I will do is I'll try and throw up picture top left corner uh, for when I'm, I'm just I'm just forward thinking here. Uh, for when I'm editing the video out, uh, I can try and do a bit of research then and throw up a, uh, a comparison to this button and try and throw up also at the top there a bit of an age uh, for this button too. Because I'm sure there'll be many out there that would love to know, uh, including me. I just, as I said, I just have not uh, got a chance to do it yet. You know, we went out and shot round seven. Uh, the day after we went and shot round eight. So I had, uh, what, three or four hours with a footage to edit and uh, also two conclusion videos to come home and shoot uh, of course after I'd finished cleaning up all the fines and keeping them separate so just phenomenal anyway guys it is another a cracker beautiful day today blue skies as you can see and uh, we are back out again for another hunt and not round nine or ten yet with the Equinox uh, 800 and the six inch coil we will be getting to that uh, today we're actually going to go to a brand new school well I can't say brand new school uh, because we have been there once in the past, but about a year and a half ago, so quite a while ago. Uh, so I'm quite intrigued uh, to see what we can find there today. It will be like a brand new site, because I said, a year and a half since we've been there. So anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe button below. And uh, we will see you back again, as I said, for round 9 and 10 with the Equinox 800, uh, utilising that little little 6-inch uh, baby's hand sniper coil, what I like to call the baby's hand coil. So awesome stuff, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe button below. Uh, we will catch you next time. Cheers and happy hunting. Okay, so we've got over the cricket pitch here, and we're on the other side now. Rightio, so we've got over the cricket pitch there, we are on the other side now, and uh, we've got ourselves our first nice target. Okay, so we've got over the cricket pitch, uh, we've just stepped... Rightio, so... Rightio, so we have made it to the end there, or well, what I am satisfied is the end. We can still get back uh, towards the oval, uh, on the back oval there, I should say, near the cricket. Rightio, so we have made it. Uh, what I think is... Uh... Okay, so what's up there, guys? Okay, so welcome back there guys. We've got you in the back room of the house now. I'm ready to take you through a look at what we did today. We've cleared this table too. Everything is on the left hand side now. We'll get to that when we do round seven and show you that anyway. So.